Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures, and it's time for another weekly painting progress. So, I am officially on vacation for the week of Thanksgiving, which is coming up right around the corner, and hopefully, that means we'll get some stuff painted. I say hopefully because I will fully admit that not having my spouse in town puts me in a general malaise of not really wanting to do a whole lot, although I did really push for that mediocrity in terms of just bland paint jobs. I know I, I am a very harsh critic of myself, but you know, it gets the job done. But thankfully, this isn't one of those pieces. Uh, I originally printed this for myself. This is, I want to say it was the Goliath from Bestiarum, if you can't tell already just as to how disturbing it is, that's probably a good sign as to all of the general decay and decrepitness and general filth, <laughs> for lack of a better word, uh, very souls born -ish. but yeah, I want to say there's another version of this with like bones and skulls everywhere, at least I was talking that with Sparkle Trout, my brother who finally got this done. Uh, I couldn't figure out what to do with it, so I farmed it off on him. So maybe that's what I'm going to have to do from now on, is every time I have a very large Bestie Aram figure that I can't figure out what I want to do with, I'm just going to send it his way. The locks and stuff. There's just tons of cool little details. And I will be the first to admit, I didn't even think I did a really good job printing it, but, I mean, he really, really made this thing pop. So we'll be sure to put this on the shorts if you always want to get a nice good look at it and it's a pretty tall model too i'm desperately searching for a space marine where are you dude he's never where i need him that's okay uh we'll show off just how big he is in a sec with some random archon woodhaven models so i just slap some paint on these guys i still have not finished building the entire kickstarter pledge that i got months later. Uh, I spent most of the time when I had COVID trying desperately to get through both uh, my Shadows of Brimstone pledges and the Archon stuff. <laughs> I didn't accomplish either. But man, I, it was just like a non-stop marathon of building, gluing, cutting, filing. And I, I showed you guys off the uh, Toshinowake, the little lantern ghost yokai from Shadows of Brimstone that I tried to paint with God Awful dried up paints and crappy brushes if you really want to see there's a video on there somewhere in these painting progress videos so yeah really simple paint job on this bandit guy you can just get a good sense of size here these models are a little bit smaller than the average well okay maybe that one isn't i'm like give me something that's okay star grade well you're not helping the situation here these guys feel small I want to say that to begin with, but I guess they're really not that bad. They feel a little diminutive. Maybe it's all in my perception of them. I mean, they're not that much smaller than a War Games Atlantic. Oh, speaking of War Games Atlantic, I'm sure most of you who are in the know have seen their tribes show up on my mini factory. That is a fun one. Of course, then I killed my printer or at least uh, the screen currently as I wait for a new screen protector. Thank goodness I had that because, man, oh, man, somehow I got a little tiny pinprick in the bottom of the vat and it just leaked resin and I, yeah. So I spent my day cleaning that out. And here is another of these Archon Woodhaven guys. Very simple, basic paint job on our barbarian friend here. and zoomed in so I had to go with a really basic simple base because he's got that rocky outcropping on his foot whereas this guy actually is on one of the plastic woodhaven bases why he's not picking up those coins not sure you'd think you know if he's bashing people over the head with the big wooden spike club maybe he's wanting to steal their gold kind of like this fellow I was going to say folk uh, another of the woodhaven models very simply, boringly painted. We have a dwarf miner, although he might be something of a thief. I like that base with the broken locks and the tools and everything, considering he's got his old tool belt there. 
Maybe he's been up to something. A little nugget of gold in his hand. Okay, he is small though. I'm like, just how small is he? I'm looking for like an oaf marked dwarf. You're not an oath mark one, but dang it, you're not helping. All right, they feel small. I don't know what it is, but I guess they really aren't. There's a lot of detail packed in them, too, and there's just tons and tons and tons and tons of them. I've got a few more I'll, I'll try to work on. If there's anything from those uh, Dungeons and Lasers Woodhaven sets you guys are curious to see, by all means, let me know in the comments. I, I got still quite a few boxes and sprues that aren't even built, and if you just want to see some of the finished models as well, hey... Let me know. That's an easy one to take care of. Okay, I think those are most of the regular models. Let's look at some 3D printed stuff. So, I saw that Kyoshu Neko, who we've seen quite a few times on this channel, usually making samurai stuff, has a nice little undead set going on on Kickstarter that's going to be wrapping up. It's already funded on its way to making all sorts of interesting models in a very evergreen sense of undead stuff. And I wanted to print one of these giant bats, number one, since it was a freebie, but number two, because I dig their stuff. Easy to pull off the supports, you know, nicely sized. Could I have done a better job? Yeah, it's a little glossy here. I just did a unit on bats too with my students, so I was like, I have to print one of these guys. Personally, I'm gonna grab that alchemist, or maybe it was a necromancer. It was a necromancer, not an alchemist. Anyway, there's some fun models there, and absolutely do take a look. We'll have a link down there below. You can check some of these out, or grab yourself an army of free bats while you're at it. All right. Other mediocre paint jobs coming up. A little bomb guy from Final Fantasy, wasn't I don't think those are the right eyes, but I just wanted to get one painted up. He's actually a single piece. He is attached to that base, thankfully. You can do it without the attached base but I figured it's a lot quicker and more efficient but you never fight just one so I'm gonna have to print up a couple more I have all my my basic grunt enemies now I kind of want to do that went ahead and did another of the gamak ninja rats been printing his herald for the rats Right up until the printer decided to go stupid on me. Very simple paint job. Again, I know when it's up close, you can see all those imperfections, but far away, I think it works a lot better. He's on actually a Archon base. Because I didn't want to glue stuff. I already had it painted, so I was like, let's use that. All right, next up, because I couldn't wait to get some painted. Some of the Raging Heroes Dwarves from this month's Heroes Infinite or Patreon. And a very basic paint job, kind of painted them up like my old Iron Drakes, kind of painted them up like my Conquest Dwegholm. That similar color scheme here, which actually looks a lot like the Celestial Vindicators for the Stormcast Eternals. And I am going to go fix this guy up this week. I'm sick of looking at those nasty looking horns on him. So, as I mentioned in the video, and I just had that posted somewhat recently within the last week or so, uh, you can do these models, for the most part, with all the extra steampunk doohickeys attached to them, or without. Sadly, there is no helmet option, so they're all going to have the same exact beard and the same exact face, which is a little disappointing, and I gotta say, I love their bases. I don't know what's going on with those cables there. But they just feel really smooth and well-sized. Uh, for a individual figure, I think this works great. If you're going to put them into units, thankfully they do fit on 20 millimeter bases as well. Is that 20 or 25? Maybe it's 25. 25 sounds right. I'm like looking around here. That's probably a 32. So yeah, uh, I guess you could, you know, flip them over, do the mirror image. But, yeah, helmets would have gone a long way. I've suggested it to Raging Heroes, but, you know, it's not like I have any sway over any of that stuff. It would be nice, though. They are some nice figures. So I'm happy to have those painted. And hopefully we will see more of them soon. 
And the last model for today, since we do have Thanksgiving coming up, which inevitably means that Black Friday sales, which have already started like since the beginning of November anyways, are, you know, starting to roll out. The one and only, my favorite part of Black Friday these days is always going to be the Kingdom Death stuff. And this next model was one of the Adventuring Maids, of which there were enough parts to build two. And she was one of the naked, quote-unquote, sprues that they did one year on Black Friday. I'm assuming last year, 2021. Um, I don't remember, actually. <laughs> I gave one to Sparkle Trout. I don't know if he's painted her yet. But I figured since she was one of those Black Friday only models, might as well try to get to her. So what's kind of neat was they had a couple of different variations. You didn't have to build her with the lantern. They had like she could be holding a cat. There were a couple of different items she could be holding in her hands. The only sad thing was they didn't have an empty cover for either of the two bags on her back. You had to have the quiver of arrows and the bundle of weapons or there was just like a square block space. There was no extra topper on the sprue. That was a shame. I mean, considering how many extra hands were included with her, it would have been nice just to have one or two little topper things. I mean, yeah, you could green stuff it over, but I think that looks cheesy, considering usually the rest of the model is pretty high quality. Not that my paint job is exactly, but, you know, it gets the job done. It's a fun little adventuring figure. She can hang out with the beach twilight night. At this point, I have so many Kingdom Death models. I think I posted a picture of just how many I've finished at this point. It's pretty crazy. So hopefully, by this time in a few days on Black Friday, we'll all be going crazy ordering whatever new interesting things. I know I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Uh, if you aren't aware, while well, I have the Raging Heroes stuff up, they had a really crazy deal going on for models on their site as well. So I will post a link to their website. Obviously, this stuff's on their Heroes Infinite, which actually is a really good deal this month, too. Uh, I know it kind of sucks if you miss a lot of these Patreon monthly releases uh, because they tend to get really pricey really fast. But I think they had a deal for, like, half off or something. And, like, for Heroes Infinite subscribers, I think it was $32 for the whole set after the fact, which isn't the best but it isn't the worst it's literally only double the actual monthly cost so i'm kind of cool with that there might be a few sets but I've, I've got just about everything that i want outside of a few individual models which i may just grab in the my mini factory big old sale as well of course now that i mentioned that if you guys know any good interesting stuff that's on sale that i haven't covered on this channel which you think is something that deserves more eyes on, please, by all means, let me know. Um, I'm always in the mood for something new, something different. I know it does tend to be a lot of 3D printed stuff these days, but it's just hard to get stuff in person. Uh, I was thinking maybe we'll do some more board game releases. I don't know. Uh, I just I feel bad always doing 3D printed stuff. Not everybody has a printer. Not everybody's interested in printing. But there's so many neat things, and I kind of feel like the you know wargaming miniature model building tabletop world seems to have kind of gravitated toward that end of the spectrum post COVID. But you know, hopefully things will swing back. I know it's not cheap, and I know it's not easy. But you know, it's definitely one of those things that I think we're all going to be kind of. Looking forward to seeing how things pan out in the future. So, yep. As I said earlier, we have links to all this stuff down below. And as before as well, if you guys have any interesting stuff you think we should be taking a look at, by all means, I would love to hear from you guys and check it out myself. So, with that said, uh, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching. And we'll see you back here soon. Bye-bye.